Now you have her in a position where she can come to Arizona and no one's going to know. She's in a car that's white, not red, so the police are not going to stop her. And she shows up with a gun and a knife. And so what happens then is that she's standing there. And then we have this photograph. Exhibit 160. This is the last photograph of Mr. Alexander while he's still living and before anything bad has happened to him. Quite a legacy for him, isn't it? As he's sitting there. Not only is he defenseless, he does not have a gun, he does not have a knife, he doesn't have any weapon whatsoever. Not only does he not have that, he doesn't have any clothing on. And as he sits there, he doesn't have any dignity either. She's taken that away from him. And if anybody is defenseless, in this case, it isn't the defendant. It's Travis Alexander. As he sits like that in that shower with his killer standing there dressed in pants, uh, presumably a top on, because there's no indication that she didn't have a top on, with his camera. And she starts snapping this. Part of the story of hers that you would have to believe is that this is also an inadvertent photograph, that this is also an accidental photograph. But take a look, if you will, at the acuity and the sharpness of this photograph. There's nothing accidental about this. Somebody held the photograph, or the camera, firmly. The defendant held it firmly as she pressed the button and took this photograph the last live photograph of Mr. Alexander. And while she had that in that position where he is in the inferior position to her, he's down. She's standing up. She can approach him. And she can approach him as he's sitting there. And she's dead. No doubt about that. This is not a case of whether or not there was an attack here, whether or not it wasn't her. It's her. And it's him, and it's the man that she has just had sex with, and it's this individual that she has planned to kill all the way from May 28th of 2008, days, even though the premeditation statute only requires a certain period of time. It doesn't require days, it doesn't require planning, it requires thinking. And so, She's been thinking about it for a long time because she came very prepared. And before she even went in there, one of the other preparations that she took was to take the license plate off the car. So now she's inside. Now she's got him like that. Can anybody think of how anything else could be so much colder or without feeling for the person than to make objection? Approach. It is cold. It is thinking. It is premeditated. To go up to this individual, someone that she has planned to kill for days, someone which, with whom she has been intimate with, and then attack him. She has indicated to you that it was a shot to the head, but the evidence, the forensic evidence, speaks otherwise. And for you to believe her, and for you to believe that the shot was first, you will need to set aside everything that she's told you, for example, the gas cans, everything else that she has told you, including the fact that she lied to the police, including the fact that she lied to uh, the experts, <coughs> including the fact that she lied here. And then you have to say, even though she's lied all of these times, even though she's looked us in the face and lied to us, we're now going to believe her with regard to just this one particular aspect. That is not something that is available to you, I submit. And I submit that because of everything that she has said. And so she gets her knife. And she took that knife and stabbed it right front here. The reason that, she, that we know that she did that is because 
Mr. Alexander has defensive wounds, and he has defensive wounds to his left and to his right hand. As she is stabbing him, he is alive, and he is cognizant of it, and she begins, he begins to grab at the knife. But unfortunately for Mr. Alexander, one of the knife wounds is to the heart. Doesn't mean he's going to die immediately. It means she's just going to die. And part of the dying process includes, because of the, it's the heart, blood coming from his mouth and blood coming out from the wounds. But he's not going to die immediately. He's going to take some time, minutes, to bleed out. But he is going to die. So in a sense, she has already killed him. He's dead. Well, you know that he gets up at some point. You know that he doesn't remain seated there. Because throughout the bathroom, or where there's the uh, mat, where there, there's the scale, all around the bathroom, everywhere, there's blood. And if there's blood everywhere, that means there is movement there. And it isn't the kind of movement that is the flopping of the fish kind of movement. It is movement, it is purposeful movement on the part of Mr. Alexander to save his life. And as this time is going by, again, premeditation does not take days. Premeditation does not take a plan. Premeditation just takes time. And it can be a shorter amount of time. The stab wound, for example, after the first stab wound, it could be that. And as he is in this position of dying, he then ambulates. And we know that she didn't carry him over to the, um, to the uh, sink. We know that he goes there by himself. And one of the things that you see there is this, 98. That's the sink, and that's the sink with his blood on it after he has been stabbed. 